Good morning, First Unitarian. It is so wonderful to be with you all today. Thank you to Reverend Mike for the lovely introduction. I am so grateful for the honor to share with you all and I greatly appreciate the invitation. Now, my dear friends, um, I have to admit to you, I tuned in last week to Reverend Mike's sermon about climate change and climate justice. And I have to say, I thought about what I was planning to share with you all this week and I definitely felt for you all. We're hitting you with a couple of really heavy topics. And as Reverend Mike mentioned, we pastors feel part of our calling is to provide the people with a bit of hope. So after a brief, maybe I should change my sermon moment. Um, I also thought it's important as pastors that we name and speak to what is happening in our world. And what is happening in our world are not easy things. So let's, let's get into it. Um, today I had us read Psalm 23. This is one of the most famous Psalms. In my Lutheran tradition, we are still celebrating Easter. And so we read or more commonly sing these Psalms this week. Um, so you all joined a few Lutherans in, in church today. The verses, even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil for you are with me are verses that are ingrained in my mind and forever will be. I want to name, when I read this psalm, I used to become so enraged. And this is because when I was a young youth, these verses were always quoted at me during times when I was struggling or sad or full of pain. A well-meaning pastor or youth director or even an elder in my church would quote Psalm 23 to me. It was as if these verses were supposed to cure me of this pain and despair, and I felt like the expectation was that they would just magically make me feel God and or divinity around me, and I would feel safe and secure and my pain would just vanish. Well, I'm here to tell you, it never worked. My pain and suffering never vanished. So imagine this. Last year, at the this exact time, I was in a Hebrew, Hebrew Bible class about the book of Psalms. We were full on in our shutdown and I was doing what I like to call virtual seminary, which meant spending three to four hours twice a week sitting in front of a computer screen on Zoom and then spending many other hours listening to a podcast style lectures from my professors. And let's just say when I packed up my life and moved to Denver for seminary, that's not exactly how I envisioned it going. So there I was doing my, my best to keep up with classes and work and maintain some sense of reality. And then here it came. The week we were going to look at Psalm 23. I about lost it. There was no way that the narrative that had been shared with me as, as I, when I was young was going to cut it. I wasn't prepared to spend a whole week studying Psalm 23 to conclude that God was always with me. Not during a time of unimaginable death and undeniable despair. I was consumed with despair at that moment. I still am. I have been struggling with this sense of despair and almost like this emptiness, which has worked itself threw me like a roller coaster over the last year. There have been moments of highs, like when I was able to see my mother and my brothers for the first time after months. And then there were immense lows as loved ones become sick or died, or even just the uncertainty of not knowing what is safe. And like I said, part of the role of a pastor is to name these hard things. Unfortunately with this, you all don't need me to name it. You all lived it. You are living it. We are living it together. This year, we have experienced a shutdown. Millions of deaths. The murders of so many black and brown people at the hands of police. Gun violence. Mass migration of people fleeing violation, violence and devastation. The planet is literally drying up and screaming at us to do something. We went through elections, 
the transition of power and are still experiencing the continued perpetuation of oppressive systems. And on top of that, at least for me, it feels like the pandemic and COVID sit in the background. They exist as this thing that is almost setting the scene for all of these other experiences. They are constantly and unforgettably there. This risk of illness and death simply lingers. And all of that has pretty much stabilized a sense of despair in my life. So now that I've named this reality, this hard thing, um, in my Lutheran tradition, we have this, this theme after naming these realities, we ask, what does that mean? What do I do with that? Well, I currently have an amazing and beautiful academic outlet. So when a class on pandemics came up this quarter, I took it. I rushed at the opportunity um, to take this class. I thought this class would just explain to me why I was experiencing this, this despair. I thought it would cure it. It would allow me to get back my sense of hope. It was a lot of expectation I was putting on this professor in this class. It was almost like I was expecting this class to do for me what people had wanted Psalm 23 to do for me when I was young. And well, we remember how that turned out. So we get into this class and let me tell you what I've learned. One of the most famous plagues in history is the bubonic plague or also known as the black plague, but I'll just refer to it as the plague. This plague lasted for centuries, like hundreds of years, which after only one year of COVID is unimaginable for me to think about. It was extremely devastating to economic life and to the development of society. And it had a huge effect and influence on people's beliefs. Many people at this time were struggling with how to make sense of mass death especially the mass death of children. There were tons of sermons and religious pamphlets created regarding the question of theodicy during this plague. Theodicy is the question of, of God and evil. How could God allow this to happen to people? Was God punishing people? Where was he at? What do I do with my faith amidst all of this pain and despair? This is what people were questioning. And when I learned this in class, I, I, I have to say, I felt such a sense of relief. It was like I was not alone and resonating with, with all of the questions that these people were asking. Now we have to name, we have a lot of privilege um, with all of our scientific and technological advances that were not available for people during the plague. There was no vaccine or Zoom available to them. And so I thought maybe I should delve into a more modern um, epidemic to see what pe people of faith did then. So I took a deep dive into the AIDS epidemic and how people, and I found that people responded in two ways. People of faith either demonized the illness and those who were being affected, or they embraced them and they ministered to them. So again, the high hopes I had for my class they didn't really turn out. Rather, they left me with this. People of faith are always questioning and wondering and trying to make meaning out of these horrific and difficult times. And people of faith either respond with, with fear or they respond with humility and empathy and they act. So I reflected as a good student and, and I was left again with this. How do we as people of faith build resilience to strengthen our ability to meet these challenging times with a little bit of divine grounding? So for me, this means embracing Psalm 23 and, and it didn't come without a fight from my professor, right? A little bit of an academic duel, you could say. But my professor, she challenged me to read the Psalms with the thought that they are poetry and that they can take us to a place of transcendence, to strip our minds of these former narratives and to attempt to tap into the power of poetry and the strength that comes with it. 
She had us read Poetry is Not a Luxury by Audre Lorde. Lord states, for within structures defined by profit, by linear power, by institutional dehumanization, our feelings were not meant to survive. But women have survived as poets. And there are no new pains. We have felt them all already. We have hidden that fact in the same space where we have hidden our power. They lie in our dreams. And it is our dreams that point the way to freedom. And so from the wisdom of Lord and the wisdom of my professor, I began to erase that notion that these verses would cure me. And I began to read them as poetry. And I began to feel their power even though I walk through the darkest valley. I fear no evil, for you are with me. I began to feel a connection with them. I can feel the power of the survival of the ancient people who definitely had their own experiences with death and exile and injustice. When I read them today, I can feel this wisdom I feel as though I am not alone in the fact that despair is still a daily feeling in my life. The ancient people too felt despair. They felt they were walking through the darkest valleys and I can resonate with that. And the wisdom they share is to not fear. It is to know you are not alone. You are with me and I am with you. Now, I know the Psalms are not for everyone, so I ask you, where is it that you can find transcendence today? Is it poetry? Is it a poem? Where is it that solace exists in your life? Where and what is it that allows you to be strengthened? Embrace that thing. Because it is through that strength and solace and transcendence that us as people of faith will build our resilience. Our people have been doing it for centuries. And we need that resilience to continue, to continue to feel despair and pain as that is part of living in and loving this world. And we need it to continue to show up for those who need us. It is through a little bit of mystic and divine connection that we will be able to continue to be the people of faith. Those people of faith we heard about who chose empathy and humility and acted during these times. Those people of faith who continue to confront injustices in the world. To be those people of faith who continue to live in deep and connected community with all, even when it's not so easy. Now I know I am leaving you all with a little bit of mystery and probably a few questions, but that is because you know your community and yourself best. You know what to follow. And so let me end with this blessing for you all. May you all find a piece of divine wisdom today, a piece of wisdom that guides and strengthens you on your journey. May you know and feel that you are not alone today or any day. May your fear be lifted and may you feel the freedom and power that exists in your dreams. May it be so. Amen.